Uh, well, my name is Brandon Lawrence. I'm 23. I'm human environmental sciences and psychology major here at UK. Uh, I've been here since 2005 with a break in, with, in between going to Iraq. Uh, sports originally brought me to UK. I was a walk on football player for a year and, you know, just enjoy the university as a whole and continue to finish here. And how old are you? 23. 23. And where were you born? Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama. Mm -hmm. So what's, is it a big difference coming from Alabama to Kentucky or pretty much the same? Uh, it's a big difference for me because in Alabama I grew up in a very rural area, not too much going on, and it was very different moving to Lexington because this is the biggest city I've ever lived in. Mm -hmm. So it, I had to adjust to a couple things. In school? In high school, tell me about high school. You know, you, like you said, you were a football player. Tell me about a little bit about that. Uh, high school was a time I really enjoyed in my life. Uh, I was a three-star athlete. You know, very intelligent. Had a 3.0 GPA when I graduated. So I mean, it was a time where everything was pretty easy. You know, just wake up, class, practice, homework. You know, same routine, but I never got tired of it. Yeah, and. What position did you play in football? I was a linebacker and a tight end. I was really attracted to the University of Kentucky because I just loved the feel of community. And not only was I going to play for a great team, but I was also going to get a good education. Mm -hmm. Is going back to your childhood, what was what was your uh, exposure to the military? How when was the first time you saw a man or woman in uniform or that commercial where you're like, that's, that's what I want to do when I get old enough to go do it? You know, I, I can't say I really paid too much attention to the military, you know, growing up because, you know, we never lived around a big base and mm -hmm. there aren't too many reserve or National Guard units in town. So very seldomly did I ever see someone in uniform. I think maybe once or twice living down there did I see anybody in uniform. Did your mom, did your mom ever talk to you about the military? Or did, you know, your, your brothers, your siblings, did, did any of them, you know, fathom going to the military? Was it? Uh, well, my sister was the first one who thought about the military when she was in high school, but she couldn't go to basic because she had her first child during high school. And the next time it was really brought up between me and my siblings, my brother joined the Marines after he graduated high school in 2003. And so, when did you graduate high school? 2005. 2005. So, you saw your older brother go off to the Marines. What was that like? You know, it was kind of odd. You know, we, it's one of those things that he never talked about either, but, you know, it, it just, it surprised me because, you know, some people's personalities aren't, you know, fitting for the military. Now, I didn't, I never thought he wasn't physically or mentally able to do it. I just thought it wasn't for him, but you know, he decided to do it and he made it happen. After your sophomore year or after your freshman year and your sophomore, what was, uh, what was the deal with football then? Did you just, well, after my freshman year, I kind of, kind of went through a depressing time because, you know, as a walk on, there is no money for tuition, you know, anything like that. So I was having trouble staying in school financially. And so depression kind of set in because I felt like I wasn't going to be in school anymore. And the grades kind of went too. So after my freshman year, I just became academ academically ineligible to, you know, continue athletics or even be in school at that point. So it was a lot different than high school. Yes. You said high school, you just had to wake up. Yeah. Go to class, go practice, and it was completely different. Yes, it was. I mean, your parents kind of manage everything when you're in high school, the bills, you know, getting you to school, getting you to practice, and so on and so forth. And when you come to college, kind of have to man up a little bit and decide whether you're gonna to go to class or not, or if you're gonna put the effort in and make good grades. Mm -hmm. 
And was that the point where you turned to the Army Reserve? Well, it it kind of took me a while to consider the Army Reserve because after my freshman year, I went back home to stay with my parents and I worked a lot of odd jobs. And I think that's where I really grew up. And, you know, those string of events kind of led me to the Army Reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, God, some people just don't know how much I went through before I joined. Because after my freshman year, I came back home and started to work for temp agencies, working odd jobs, mm -hmm. just to try and save up money so I could go back to school because my parents couldn't afford to send me themselves. So I started off, what did I do? I, I think for a little while I was a janitor. I worked in uh, Tiss and Krupp. It's a division of General Motors making car parts. I worked for a company called Paris Packaging making fast food boxes. And just odd jobs here and there just to get me by. But during that whole process, you know, I, it made me just realize the opportunity I had and that and the opportunity I wasted also. You know, college is one of those things now that you really need. And when you become a laborer, you start to really understand the importance of an education. Yeah. So you had a lot of self reflecting moments saying, This is how it could be if I didn't Yeah. Yeah. So you learned a lot through that process. You learned responsibility oh yeah who you were where you wanted to go so I guess your next natural step was the military is that you know it, it was it you know it surprised my family because before then I had never mentioned it you know and even the last factory job I had you know making fast food boxes it was a decent paying job so they kind of figured I was gonna stay there settle save up money and go back to school but at the same time I felt like I really wasn't going anywhere as if I, you know when I'm in college you know I feel like hey I'm progressing towards a career and at that job I really didn't feel that way so I was like what's one way I can really advance my career so I sat down you know thought about it and I was like you know the military you know isn't that bad I just gave some thought to it because I graduated from Hopkinsville High School, so it's right next to Fort Campbell. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to seeing people in uniform. I was like, you know, it might not be that bad to just join the military. And so when you walked into the recruiter's office, or did they recruit you? How did it? You know what? The Me joining the Army was probably even more random because I was like, okay, I just want to join the military. I feel like I'm physically tough enough to do anything, and I'm smart enough to join any branch. So I just so happened to go in there one evening after work, and I was like, okay, the Air Force place is closed. Not really into the Navy. The Marine guys are busy, so I just looked in the Army recruiting office, and I walked in and sat down and talked to a recruiter. And so what did you, what, what did you say to him? I just... I was very upfront with them. I was like, hey, this is something I really want to do. If you're honest with me, you will have my commitment to join the Army. So we sat down, talked it out, and, you know, he was very honest, upfront, and, you know, he let me know what I was getting myself into. And did you lay everything out? Did you say I went A, B, C, D, and... <laughs> Or did they say, this is what we can give you? Sorry, kid. If you don't want it, go away. No, nah, they... I, I I let them know what I wanted out of it. And, you know, I just wasn't going to let anybody tell me what I could and could not do. And I knew I was very capable of anything. So when I talked to the recruiter, I was like, hey, this is the MOS, the field I want. You know, are there any bonuses available? And just give me a a timetable of when I'm leaving, when I'll be coming back, and, you know, the possibilities of me going overseas, just, you know. So it was a lot different than working at a, you know, instead of working at a temp agency where they're saying, this job's open, go do it. 
you know, you can come in and you can fix your job. And yeah. And so at that point, were you really excited? Yes, I, I was, you know, very excited, a little bit nervous, but, you know, really excited because I had that same feeling I had of being in college where like, hey, my life is really going somewhere. You know, I picked a career that, you know, I want as of right now. And the Army is a field where I can progress, get promoted. And like I said, it always looks good on a resume. Yeah. And uh, so what occupation did you choose? I chose 42 Alpha, which is Human Resources Specialist. You know, just kind of handle all the paperwork of the Army, all the documentation, and just if if it goes on paper, I handle it. How come you chose that occupation? Well, I chose it, I'm gonna be honest, you know, they gave me a pretty good bonus because it was really needed at the time. And also, you know, I know some people wanna join the fight, they wanna do infantry, be a tanker. I felt like it was the perfect career to start off in because there's a lot of paperwork in the military. So I feel like if I understood the paperwork, and how to get ahead, that really helped me farther down in my career. That's true. There's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> um, so at that point, you left uh, the recruiter's office. Did you go home and say, Mom, Dad, <laughs> you know, this is what I did. What, what happened? You know, I kind of, they weren't mad at me, but they were kind of upset and shocked because you know, me talking to the recruiter, you know, I mentioned to my dad, but he didn't think I was serious. And I kind of kept it a secret until the day I was supposed to go to MEPS. And I just brought home a folder saying, hey, I just filled out some paperwork and I'm going to go to the Army. And my stepmother was, she was a little upset. And my dad was kind of shocked and taken back. And, you know, we have a neighbor who's a Vietnam veteran. And he just kind of, he was proud, but... His son was in Iraq too, so he was like, oh God, I'm, we're sending another person on the streets to war. And so at that point, did you, was your brain swimming with, I could go this direction, I could go to Iraq, I could go to Afghanistan, anything could happen, where were you really focused on just being in the moment? You know, being in the moment, you know, even though I was joining the Army, you know, I think I was more focused on school still. You know, even though I know there was a possibility of going overseas, you know, my main motivation was to help discipline myself, but also get money for college, the money that I, you know, was hard to come by my freshman year and through working for temp agencies. So I was still just focused on school, like, hey, I'm gonna join the army, gonna have this on the side, but I can also, you know, maintain or, you know, get my goal and get to go back to school. Maybe three weeks after I'd gotten home from AIT, the reserve unit that I'd been assigned to, they gave me a call and said, hey, uh, you have to take a trip to Birmingham. I was like, uh, what's going on in Birmingham? And uh, they just told me they were probably going to deploy me. So had to put college on hold until until I figured out what was happening at Birmingham. So you went down to Birmingham? And I went to the 81st Regional Readiness Command. And, you know, I started to figure out very quickly that everybody that was down there was pretty much going overseas. So I was like, oh, man, how do I break the news to my parents? You know, and at the same time, I wonder, where am I even going? first off, and who am I going with? So while I was down there, they kind of told me what to expect over the next couple of months. They let me know how long I was going to be deployed and what unit I was assigned to. And what were you thinking? What were you thinking it was going to be like even for, <laughs> even for, you know, for an HR, you know, non-infantry person? <laughs> what, what, what were you thinking it was going to be like? Uh, I, I honestly thought I was probably going to be assigned to some company and do paperwork the whole time, kind of lounge and sit in the air-conditioned office under a E7, E6, and just do whatever they told me to do. And was it like that? No, it was not. They let us know what our mission was going to be, and we were doing postal operations at Fob Cal Zoo, Iraq, so the next day 
we caught a flight to Fob Cal Zoo and set up. When you were back in Birmingham, <coughs> when you were back in Birmingham, and you found out that, you know, from some guy to your left or your right or somebody <laughs> they were talking to that you guys were indeed going over to Iraq, what was your initial reaction? What, what were you thinking? You know, I kind of didn't want to believe it because, you know, over the past year I had invested so much thought into going back to school that I was kind of like, I was disappointed, but there was a tad bit of excitement because you know, going to war is one of those things that very few people get to experience, whether it's good or bad. It's one of those stories that no one can take away from you. And, you know, it's, it was an, a learning experience. And what was it like being, having to put college on hold? You know, something that you <laughs> wanted so bad. I, you know, I was, I was very upset. I mean, just, you know, when people have dreams and goals, we never like to see them get a set aside for anything. But at the same time, I was serving a higher purpose other than myself, so I, I didn't mind too much. And so when you got over there, what was, what was your task in Iraq? My task, uh, you know, when they start handing out jobs the first day, you know, everybody had a pretty cush job, you know, they either sorted mail or, you know, worked at the cash register. And they just told me, hey, Lawrence, you're going to be driving a forklift. I was like, okay, what am I loading? And they told me CH-47 Chinooks. I was like, you mean a helicopters? They're like, yeah. So I was like, God, I'm going to be working around million dollar pieces of, of equipment, you know, something I've never done before. You know, it was pretty hard, you know. One of those jobs that didn't get much credit for, but it had to be done. And so your job, and what, what base was this on? Fob Calzoo. Fob Calzoo. And what was that base like? Was it a remote one? Was it a, a yeah. larger one? Was it? No, it was one of the smaller bases, you know, maybe eight, 900 people. Probably, it's probably grown since then, but it was very small out in a rural part of Iraq, farmland. You know, we didn't have a lot of the extras that the larger bases have. We didn't have fast food or, you know, a green bean, if you know what I mean. So it was pretty just, you know, off in the cut. And how long were you over there for? Nine months. What would you load onto those CH? Uh, basically, for the most part, mail, but there was also a lot of equipment that the base had. So not only was I loading mail, I could be just anything unit had, you know, if a unit was leaving, I might load their equipment, you know, rifles, luggage, so on and so forth onto the planes and, you know, have it shipped out. And also the helicopters would drop off equipment for the base. It would be mail, artillery shells, uh, parts for the UAVs, the spy planes. So just if it had to go, I'd take it to the aircraft and if it was coming in I'd pick it up. And did you what did you know about the country and the weather and the the climate and, <laughs> and what did you know about it before you went over? You know, the same two things that everybody else said was hot and dusty. You know, other than that I mean they're they're pretty much right, don't get me wrong. It was hot for the most part and not too much vegetation, not too many clouds, and it was pretty bad during the summer and okay during the winter. Nine months is a long time. Yeah. Did um, did you all, did you all ever get mortared? Yes, we did get mortared. Kind of shocked me the first time because, you know, we all we always shot back at them. So I was used to hearing outgoing rounds. And the first time it happened, it kind of shocked me because I never heard anything blow up around me before. And what was that like, you know, to, to not know where it's coming from or to know not where it's going to land? 
you know, I think that's the first time I really thought about my life and, you know, being in danger. It is one of those things that kind of, and I honestly, I didn't expect, but after it happened, I was like, wow, I'm really in a war zone and somebody is really trying to take my life. So kind of, you know, awoken me to the seriousness of being overseas. The job I did was kind of taken for granted at time by, you know, civilians or people who weren't familiar with the military. But for those who actually serve, they knew the importance of my platoon's job and my job. And it kind of made me feel good to see a soldier get a package that he's been waiting on for two weeks, you know, full of photos, treats from home, just, you know, we're a really big combat multiplier and we made a lot of soldiers happy over there when they received mail. You know, in, in, in my opinion, at, some, at, at, at a certain point, you know, that package is more powerful than a bullet down range. Yeah. You feel that way? Yes, I, I felt that way because the right, the right box could erase a day of bad memories for any soldier. Did you guys kind of have a motto? I mean, did you guys kind of have like a, I mean, that, that'd be a great motto. Uh, you know, we, I mean, it would be a great motto. We never had a motto. We just, you know, came to work every day, did our job, and, hey, the soldiers were glad to have us there. So you came back home, you came back to Kentucky? Yes. And from there, what did you do? I got back on track. Uh, and enrolled in school. And what was that like coming back to the university? You know, it was it was different from a lot of standpoints. You know, it was better because I was able to finance my education. I had a car this time around, a cell phone, something I didn't have my freshman year. And the college experience got a lot better because I could, you know, take in more. Before, like, my freshman year, you know, I didn't have a car, didn't have friends with cars. So I never, I never really seen the city of Lexington. The only road I had been on was Nicholasville, and that was to go to Walmart twice. So I was able to kind of, you know, just enjoy the city of Lexington, enjoy college, you know, all the things I missed out on my freshman year. And did you notice any you know, you were active duty for nine months, and you got used to a certain mentality, a certain rhetoric, a certain mm -hmm. way of living, a routine. How was it different, and did you find any things in, it, 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 in college or in class that made the transition harder, or in, or in regular everyday life? You know, I gotta say the transition from active back to a student, it was pretty easy for me because when you go from basically a year of working with no time off, you know, college isn't so hard. You know, a lot of people, you know, kind of complain about going to a one hour class or studying for a couple of hours. And to me, I kind of had the same mentality of there's a mission, you know, being homework, projects, anything, and it has to get done on time and in a good fashion. So. Whenever I had homework, I got it done, made it to class because, you know, on the active side, there is no missing meetings or missing training. So I was always on time for everything and pretty much did everything to a T. And so at what point did you join the ROTC in KUK? I joined this past semester and, you know, I've enjoyed it so far and you know, an officer, being an officer was something that I started to consider after my deployment because we had some good leaders and then there were some leaders who just weren't carrying their own weight. So at that moment, you know, I realized that, you know, when you're, in, when you're a leader, you know, officer, non-commissioned officer, you influence a lot of people's lives and you have a lot of power over other people. And you know, a good leader pushes, you know, junior enlisted in the right direction. And, you know, you're responsible for other people's lives and well-being. And 
I just didn't like seeing, you know, leaders who didn't care. And I was like, the only way you can, the only way I can change this, you know, cycle is to become a leader myself. So a lot of a lot of things are different than since your freshman year. Yes. And do you still think about football? Every day. There's not a day that you know goes by that I don't think about getting back onto the field. And you know I'm I'm having fun, just being a student and enjoying college. But I think about it every day. I tell my parents, you know, how much I think about football. But you know I do understand, you know, between. 2005 and 2008, UK's program has gotten a lot better and they've recruited a lot better. So, you know, I can't say, you know, I deserve to be down there because, you know, the talent and bowl wins kind of speak for themselves. So I let the professionals handle it. What was your overall opinion and mood like uh, about your deployment? You know, no. good, bad, great. Well, there were good moments, bad moments, you know, time in between. But after it's all said and done, I, I got to say th it's probably the greatest memory I'll ever have, you know. And, you know, unless I go back again, and which I'm pretty sure there's that chance that it may happen. But that being my first time, it's, it's I hold it, you know, it's very close to my heart. Were you proud of that time? Yes, I, I was very proud. You know, just becoming one of those people who can say they've really done something for their country. You know, a lot of people, you know, I applaud them for doing community service, you know, and helping people. But I think, I, I think fighting terrorism is the ultimate community service because you're helping two countries, the, the Iraqi people, and you're protecting the protecting our nation. And you know how 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 is your mood? How is that attitude? You know, you're probably a different person when you're <laughs> a freshman. So yeah, do um, you think you would have had that mentality as a freshman that the ultimate community service is no, terrorism? No, I. You know, when I was a freshman, my mind wasn't processing too much besides football, school, and parties. And after the deployment and all the things I went through, I finally grew up and was able to just kind of bring it all together and de decide what's important and, you know. Do you find that your peers in class, your attitude now, is a lot different than theirs. Yes, they, you know, the people who were here when I was a freshman, you know, when they see me, you know, after I came back, they knew my persona changed, my way of thinking changed. You know, I gained a lot of respect for it. They were just kind of like, wow, this guy has been through some things. So everybody listened to what I had to say, and this, they knew that I had become a different person, a, a better person. And do you think a lot of that, those experiences have, have uh, you know, improved your life, improved your academics, improved <laughs> your family life, or, you know, the, from the military boot camp, the deployment, has it all been positive experiences, or have there been some dips that uh, kind of been? You know, I, I have to say, and I'm very honest, no dips. It's, everything has been positive. You know, I'm looked at as a leader in my family because, you know, I've kind of risen through the ranks. My grades have been a lot better since, you know, since I came back. And, you know, you know, everybody has kind of, they everybody knows I've become a better person. And, you know, I'm something to be admired in my family now. Like, hey, that's Brandon. He's a veteran. He's been through boot camp. Now he's back in school. He makes good grades. So I've kind of went from being an average person in my family to someone that the younger children kind of look up to. What about your older brother? <laughs> what does he say? 
you know, he's proud of me. He, you know, that's my best friend in the world, you know, and he's proud of me. You know, whenever we talk about it, he just, you know, you'd almost think he's been overseas, you know, because he's that proud of what his brother's done, so. What are you looking forward to doing after you graduate? Uh, since my experience with the military has been so good, I, I plan on going active duty as an officer. You know, I want to make a career out of this because, you know, the, pa the past three years I've, I've kind of, you know, fallen in love with the Army. You know, I'm working towards a greater good, and it's a job where there's a lot of camaraderie, and every day is different. You know, it's not like I'd go into some office after college and do the same thing every day. I have to say there's, there's not one day in the Army that's been the same for me. How do you think you're different than the typical college student? A uh, little bit more mature. Uh, having gone through so many things, I don't take life for granted like so many college students do. You know, some college students complain about the, the smallest things, but they don't know how it feels to be in a place that, you know, it, it only rains five times a year or not seeing grass ever. So, like a lot of college students take things for granted, and whereas I just kinda, I'm grateful for everything that I have, you know, being an American citizen and just, you know, the life that we live. You know, until the formation of the, you know, Student Veterans Association, there wasn't too much being done for veterans, you know. So I can't say that, you know, UK was a big help in helping me transition into being a college student again. What was that experience like coming back? Was it overwhelming to be able to fill out all that paperwork and go through <laughs> all those bureaucratic strings? Yes, it was. It, I, I got to say, you know, being a student was the easy part, but it was kind of that transition of, you know, re-enrolling, buying books, and just getting back on, you know, a student schedule. And if you were a new student or a, a currently enrolling now, how do you think your experience would be different? Oh, after have, having been through well, yeah. w with the resources that are there now and with the attention on veterans at UK, how do you think it would be different now? Do you think it wouldn't be as cumbersome? Or? You know, it, I think it's a lot better now because each year I see the university takes steps, you know, you know, toward making the transition easier for veterans, you know. My, uh, the VA representative is very helpful you know, and now there's kind of like a veteran support system where we kind of help each other out and we kind of network and connect with each other to make being in school a little bit easier. I know we were on the football field together and it was the first time during the military appreciation game that UK actually acknowledged student veterans. How did that make you feel? When it, it made me feel really good because, you know, Let's be honest, you know, sometimes you want to get recognition for, you know, going overseas and doing, you know, doing something like that for your country. And it, was, it just felt good to be recognized and, you know, the university letting us know that, hey, we do support you guys and, you know, we, we have your backs. And Do you feel that you're a more engaged student than the traditional student that yes. you're able to put on the blinders and yes you know I I know what's important to me and you know that's what I'm here for I'm not saying I don't have fun you know I don't socialize but at the end of the day I know I'm here to get an education that's the mission and I'm going to accomplish it and what are your goals uh, short-term goals are just to, you know, graduate 
and make sure I do it in a good fashion. You know, long-term goals are basically what every American wants. You know, stable life, you know, wife, kids, you know, maybe a good duty station once I graduate. Um, you know, I don't need very much. I just basically need, you know, happiness and, you know, family. Are you proud of your service as a alcoholic? Yes, I'm proud of my service. Like I said, most people will enter and leave this world not having done much with their lives. And I feel like at the you know young age of 23, I've already done so much and I still feel like there's a lot left to do.